sorry I didn't see you there. <laughs> Can I help you with anything today? Are you just browsing? Yes, I do apologise for that. Um, we're a relatively new second-hand bookshop and uh, I haven't had time to probably like, categorise and alphabetize anything yet, so I'm really sorry if the shop is a little bit higgledy-piggledy at the moment. I need to hire an assistant to help me. Uh, so, I can help you with anything that you're looking for. Are you looking for any book in particular? Uh, so, you're just having a little browse. That's great. Well, we do have a variety of uh, different books here, ranging from fiction to non-fiction. Pretty much any genre you can think of, any subject that you can think of too. So, are you looking for a fiction or not a non-fiction book? Oh, I see. Okay. Well, if it's fiction you are you are after, um, are, are you looking for any genre in particular? Horror, sci-fi, romance, crime. <laughs> well, if you're looking for my opinion, might I recommend one of my favourite books to you? We actually do have one in stock and I can, I can see it. <laughs> Shall I go and grab it for you? Wonderful. Two seconds. <laughs> Alright, so this book is one of my favourite books of all time. I can even remember where I was, how old I was when I first bought this book. It is called The Thirteen and a Half Lives of Captain Bluebell. Now, this isn't a children's book, and it's not a young adult book either, to my knowledge. At a hefty page count, it can be a little bit intimidating, but it is aimed for adults. And it is written by an author called Walter Morris, who has written many, many, many books in this style. This one follows the life of a blue bear called Blue Bear. <laughs> We follow him through his life, well, thirteen and a half of them. So from birth to kind of middle-aged, we follow his life and his adventures through a continent known as Zamonia. Now, Zamonia is full of weird and wonderful creatures which Blue Bear encounters on his journey. We follow him as he is born in a tiny little walnut shell in the middle of an ocean. We have no idea how he got there, but he is heading straight towards the Maelstrom, which is a giant plug hole in the sea that sucks everything down into it. Fortunately, Blue Bear is rescued by the mini pirates, which are these guys here, who basically raise him until he is too big for their boat. And then he goes out Now, 
one thing you will instantly recognize from Walter Moore's work is his use of illustrations in a way that complements the narrative. He is the illustrator as well as the writer and he uses illustrations to really show you what's in his imagination and I think this is truly, truly unique and this is why I love this book so much for instance, this is Professor Nightingale and he acts as our almost encyclopedia to what's going on, what kind of creatures we're encountering so he kind of tells you what's kind of going on so you don't get lost <laughs> he also uses font, uh, size and different types of fonts to elaborate again on what he's saying as you can see, we have crash, crash, crash <laughs> to make it appear more, or give it more emphasis. He also uses bold text when there's a bit of explaining to do, the encyclopedia. <laughs> and honestly, this is a fantasy book that's honestly unlike anything. You truly, truly will just be swept away in Walter Morris's imagination. The book is broken down into 13 and a half chapters, which each follow a different uh, adventure by Bluebird. And each one outdoes the last. Each one is so full of adventure, danger, mystery, and it's just like a, a current that pulls you into the storyline and the narrative. And I'm not a huge fan of fantasy, but this book, this book is probably one of my most favourite fantasy novels. Well, the only one I really could get into. <laughs> so, is this a maybe for you? Are you intrigued? How many pages? Um, let me have a look. Has a grand total of 702 pages. <laughs> so probably not practical for commuting. Unless you uh, like to read big books on the train. So would you like me to put this on the maybe pile? That's wonderful. Well, if you get on with this, we do have other titles by Walter Moores, which include Rumo, The City of Dreaming Books, The Labyrinth of Dreaming Books, The Alchemaster's Apprentice, and A Wild Ride Through the Night, which all have that similar structure to them, with the grand imaginative storyline mixed with his wonderful illustrations. So I put this on the maybe list. Perfect. So, what else were you looking for? Were you looking for any other particular fiction genres? Well, we have post-apocalyptic. <laughs> We have a lot of dystopian books. Um, we have dystopian books, classic dystopian or new dystopian. Okay, um, what about like horror dystopian? Yeah, do you like vampires? <laughs> Who doesn't? Well, I do have, I do have two vampire novels that you may like. One is a dystopian vampire novel and another is a more drama based, dy uh, it's not really dystopian, it's more drama thriller, 
I would say. Which which one do you think? Uh, okay, I will pick the dystopian one first then. I'll go grab it. So, this one is called The Passage by Justin Cronin. Now, this is a little bit like Stephen King. Have you read any of Stephen King's work? Well, I would say that this is very similar to The Stand by Stephen King. So you have that kind of post-apocalyptic dystopian backdrop, but instead of like um, the devil and God in The Stand, it's vampire. So, the basic premise of this book is there is uh, an expedition into the jungle, I think it's Bolivia, somewhere like that, and a group of scientists manage to isolate the vampire gene, and they experiment on inmates on death row. But what they don't realise is that they have created vampires. And of course, these vampires escape and they pretty much take over the world and destroy humanity as we know it. However, there is a young girl, I believe her name is Amy, it's been a long time since I read this book, who is kind of immune. Not immune in the way that she's, uh, it, like, it doesn't affect her, this virus, because she is, like, one of the test subjects, but it doesn't turn her into a vampire. It turns her into kind of like a half-vampire, half-human kind of person, and she's the key to stopping this outbreak. It's a very, like, slow burn book, but really worth it. There are two more books in this series by Justin Cronin. It's They're called The Twelve and The City of Mirrors. So if you get on with this book, then I highly recommend you to check out those two because they follow along to this main storyline. How many pages? Yes, it's a big hefty tomb again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just giving you all the books that are like giant. So, there are a grand total of 963 pages. <laughs> Crazy, right? But I really like this book. It's a very different take on the whole vampire um, mythology, and I like the way in which it weaves it into a post-apocalyptic, dystopian kind of storyline. That's like all three of my favourite things rolled into one. <laughs> so, on the maybe pile. <laughs> Perfect. So, what about the other vampire novel? You like vampires? Okay. This one I've read about four or five times. The first time I read it, it didn't really grab me. I kind of read it and thought it was okay. But then something about it played in my mind and I gave it another read and I was totally blown away and totally hooked and I've read it maybe every other year from then on. So let me go and grab it. This one is called The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. Now, this is kind of like a stealth vampire story because from the outset 
You wouldn't think it has anything to do with vampires, right? You think mm, something to do with history, right? It's called the historian. Well, you would be correct because the main character is kind of going on a journey to try and find out some mysteries about her family and her past. And it takes her all across Eastern Europe through a time where technology wasn't so advanced. So you're really going back in time and you're really looking at the world through kind of like innocent eyes, if you know what I mean. And the main character is swept away on an adventure which is totally above her, like totally over her head. She's in too deep. And all the while, you are getting so much history about the law of vampires, the real kind of uh, historical facts that have contributed to the vampire lore and mythology for all these years, which I love because I am a bit of a history nut. <laughs> so I love anything to do with learning about. This book doesn't disappoint because there's a lot of historical facts weaved in through the main narrative and I learned so much about where the vampire lore came from. The ending is very unique because it gives us exactly what we want but in a way in which is still in keeping with the main narrative. So it can seem a little jarring but it's leading all up to this moment, if you know what I mean. How many pages? We have an epilogue. 704 pages. And I honestly really wish that she would write another vampire book. <laughs> She's written other books um, which are totally different narratives and storylines. But I wasn't really so keen on those. I wanted more vampires. So I can't really recommend anything else that Elizabeth has written. But do you think this will be one for you? On the maybe pile. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. So you have three books on your maybe pile. Fiction books. Now, were you looking at any non-fiction books at all? I see. All right. Well, what about actually, instead of non-fiction, what about some more fiction recommendations, but a different format? How do you like graphic novels and comics? Yes, me too. I am kind of a little bit hit and miss when it comes to graphic novels and comics. I'm a little bit fussy. It sounds like you are too. <laughs> I like a specific uh, type of comic or graphic novel. I don't like really anything too superhero-y. I like uh, more gritty and kind of unique um, indie kind of graphic novels. Well, in that case, I have two that I would like to recommend to you. The first one, I will just go and grab. So, this is Chew by John Lehman and Rob Gilroy. So, this is a graphic novel. Um, it follows the life of Tony Chu, who is a Chibabath. Chibabath, I think that's how you pronounce it. Basically, when he eats anything, 
he has the power or the ability to immediately identify where it came from, how it was killed, how it was harvested, what its life was, literally moments before its death. <laughs> so this really, really helps because he is a detective. So, he has the unpleasant task of chewing or eating, nibbling, if you want to kind of go about saying it, his victim, like the crime victims, to see who killed them and how they were killed or what happened to them. This is obviously a very burdensome ability to the point where he can only really eat beetroot because it's not so traumatic for him. So it follows Tony Chu and the kind of crimes he is sent to investigate. It is set like in a backdrop of a kind of like dystopian world. There's been like an avian flu epidemic and chicken is like outlawed. <laughs> So it's really, really weird, and there's a big conspiracy that he's trying to uncover, and this kind of spreads along multiple different volumes. This is volume one, and we're trying to get to the bottom of it. Now, there are so many different weird and wonderful things in this graphic novel comic that sometimes it goes over my head because it, it's so off the wall, but I love it so much. The illustration is really unique and really lovely. It has kind of like a really like grimy feel to it. It's not like clean and crisp. Everybody looks kind of like a little bit strange and a little bit twisted. The colours are like quite saturated. Um, saturated, desaturated if you know what I mean. So you have a lot of greys which are really super saturated greys, but then you have flecks of colour here and there, like, for instance, on this page, you have, like, a kind of, like, neutral toned two pages, but then you have, like, this really big pop of blue, which I really, really love, and I can sort of fly through these in an afternoon, so they're really kind of binge reading. And we do have a couple of them in stock. I think we go one, two, three, four, five. I think we have about five volumes. I'm not sure what volume they're on at the moment. I think it's probably like volume 10 or something. It really does span a big kind of, um, a big world and a big storyline. And I do believe they're making a TV show out of or like an animated TV show or something. I think David Tennant's playing one of the characters and I can't think who's playing. I hope it's Stephen Young <laughs> for Tony Chu. That would have been my casting of choice. So that's Chu. Are you... is it a maybe? It's a maybe. That's great. So the other graphic novel that I want to share with you is something that I read couple of years ago and it really stuck with me and we do have the second volume in stock as well which I haven't actually read yet but I'm gonna make it my mission to read it this year and that is gives you kind of like that Stranger Things retro vibe. And basically, it's about a group of girls, paper girls, who deliver papers. I think it's set in the 80s. So it's kind of like Stranger Things in a little way like that. And they come across this phenomenon. 
in which they are kind of transported into this strange, I think it's an alter alternate timeline or something, but it's weird. <laughs> now, what I love about this is that the colour palette is this like, mm, like retro pink purples for when it's just the girls on their bikes, but then it gets really interesting when like you get flashes of colour that really pop out. So, mm -hmm. It's really amazing. The colours are phenomenal. The characters are written so well. Each character has their unique voice and their unique identity. I really like the badass girl. <laughs> She's great. I like these. <laughs> and we have some like little meta in jokes here. So it's a little bit of time travel, a little bit of alternate realities and universes. As you can see, it gets kind of weird. Weird is good, right? <laughs> so that's the Paper Girls. So that is volume one. And we do have volume two, and obviously it just carries on with the main storyline. And again, I think they are adapting this into a TV show, even though there is a little bit in this book to say, like, they're never going to adapt it into a TV show, but I think they are. <laughs> so that's Paper Girls. Now, do you like Stranger Things? You do. Okay. Oh, actually, do you want me to put this on your... Maybe. Okay, sorry, I just was like, put it back. You would like this on your maybe pile? Like I was saying, do you kind of like Stranger Things, the TV show? Well, I do have something which is non-fiction, which you might like. This is Stranger Things, World Turned Upside Down. It comes in this really lovely, crinkly dust jacket with the used sticker. It's intentional. It says Melvold's General Store. There. <laughs> and it's made to look like it's been really well used. As you can see, there's like dog eaten corners. It's all scratched and torn up on purpose. Just like here. Just like a behind the scenes look at the storyline. You have all about the characters, a little bit about like the props and the backstories and stuff. Or like uh, photos from set. scenes of movies, then you're like this. And in this book, you also get like all these little props, like stuff like this. <laughs> so I think it's really interesting. It's likely to fall out, so be careful. And on the inside of the dust jacket, you have Will's I think that's really unique. And we do have a lot of making of movie books here. This isn't the only one. 
we have uh, a lot of books on Star Wars, we have a lot of books on a lot of Steven Spielberg films, we have Alien, Terminator, Game of Thrones, we have a lot of making of books about video games like Fallout, Uncharted, Battlefield, The Last of Us, loads of different things. So if you're into like artwork and um, making of, then uh, we've got a really big selection. But for now, were you interested in this one? Not so much. Alright, that's the ones. But it's always here if you change your mind. So, I think you have a pretty good collection so far. You have the Paper Girls, Chew, the Historian, the Passage, and Captain Bluebear. Now, which ones were you looking at getting? All of them. Wow. Okay, that's brilliant. Well, what I'll do is I'll get them uh, rung up on the register. Were you actually interested in joining our loyalty program? Well, for every 10 books that you purchase, you get one book absolutely free of your choice. And then after a year, you get a special discount where you get 10% off all the books in our store, as well as the, uh, yes, the 10 for one. Great, so uh, what I'll do is I'll ring up those for you now, and then I'll get you joined on to our loyalty program too. Alright, yeah, follow me over to the till. 